once again here uh, to bring to you the glad tidings of uh, the gospel of Jesus, uh, Son of God, uh, the gospel that John offered to you, uh, yours just simply for the taking if you'd like one. It's an extract from the Bible, John's Gospel, and uh, it was uh, written, uh, it tells us that you might uh, believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that by believing, you might have life in his name. That's how a person gets life, eternal life. That's how a person gets right with God. That's how a person gets salvation forgiveness that's how a person gets the love of god by believing in jesus his son sent into the world to be the savior of the world uh, to save men and women to bring them back to god to bring them to his love to bring them to his grace to bring them to his salvation believe look unto me all the ends of the earth and be saved. Anybody can look. Doesn't You don't have to be clever. You don't have to be a mathematician. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be, you know, uh, in the super class. You know, anybody can look. The look of faith, looking to Jesus and him crucified. Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. Whoever you are, whoever you be, look to Jesus and be saved. Like a copy of his word, read about Jesus. Well, you come and ask for one. It's really offered to you. No cost, no obligation to you. It's God's word, his own word. I read and see what he might say to you today you'd like a copy of god's word come and ask me for one gladly place one into your hands in the bible in god's word in the book of psalms it's where we are today psalm 80 and verse 14 if you want to check it out return we beseech thee o god of hosts Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Visit this corner of your creation. In other words, it's a cry for God to return and to visit men and women and to visit them with his salvation. And of course, that's a necessity because, well, because of man's apostasy man's departure from god you depart from god and god departs from you you walk out he walks out and this is man this is the human race this is the whole the entire human race the world over this is the this is the controversy that god has with the human race that man kind has departed from God, apostatized, forsaken God. And so we ought to be seeking after him. We ought to be calling upon his name. We ought to be crying out to him, imploring him as the psalmist does, that God would return to us and visit us. You see, my friends, we come into the world in this natural born state and condition we are conceived says god in sin we are born in sin and of course we come into the world formed shapen in iniquity and lawlessness and we live that way ignoring rejecting god not seeking after god not seeking his salvation but living carelessly and living hopelessly and some of you living despairingly. Why? Because of the distance between you and God, separated from God by your iniquities, by your lawless deeds, 
and by your lawless nature. That's the state and condition. But God, you see, in his loving, in his merciful kindness, God has done something about our state and condition. He has given us his son, sent his only begotten son into the world to die on a cross, rise again from the dead in order that men and women might be brought back to God, that men and women might cry out to him, that they might seek him, and that they might cry to him, return the O Lord, return, come and visit me with your salvation, come to me and save me, come and redeem me, come and reconcile me to yourself. Men ought to seek God, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, says Jesus, and all the rest shall be added unto you. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Today, my friends, call upon the name of the Lord. Beseech him, implore him that he would return to you and heal your departure, heal your apostasy from God. Only Jesus only Jesus, only by his death, only by his shed blood can reconcile you to God. Religion can't do that for you. Morality can't do that for you. Trying to be good can't do that for you. Only Jesus, only Jesus can do that for you. Reconcile you to God. That's what he came for. And that's what he loves doing. Reconciling men to us to his father. He, he loves to. That's his best work. That's his good work. Judgment is his strange work. He loves to reconcile sinners to God. That's what he came for. That's what he lived for. That's what he died for. That's what he rose again from the dead for. Because he loves to reconcile sinners to God. And if you would but cry out to him, call upon his name, seek his face, return, return to me, O Lord, and heal my apostasy, heal my departure from you. I sinned. I'm a sinner by nature. I was conceived and I was born in sin, and I've lived in sin all my days. But come and reconcile me to yourself. Jesus, come to me, return to me, and grant me the salvation that you purchased and present to me freely here this morning. And then, my friends, there's not just, not just the, not just the, the world, not just the entire human race, is guilty before God, but as a nation, as a nation we are guilty before God, because God has visited this nation before in a mighty way. God has visited this nation in times past, and here you are, you're a generation today, and you don't know anything about that. You don't know the history of God's dealing with your nation. The great deliverances that God has wrought in this nation. For thousands, millions of people were saved, were born again of God's Spirit, brought into the kingdom of God, reconciled to God by His Son, Jesus Christ. But oh, look at you now as a nation. Look at you now. Heathen religion abounds amongst you permeate your society. Look at the uncleanness. Look at the deviance in your sexuality. Look at the breakdown of family life. Look at the drugs. Look at the violence. Look at the lawlessness that abounds in your nation now today, such as never before in the history of your nation because of your apostasy, because of your departure from God, because of your forgetting God. And so your need is, 
Your need is along with the rest of the human race to cry out to God that he would return and that he would visit our land, visit our nation again, that he would come with salvation, that he would come with power, redemptive power, regenerating power, that men and women might be born again because that's what it takes to enter God's kingdom. Not just being religious, not just paying lip service to God. God must do a work in your heart. He must come and visit you. He must come and visit you, my friend. He must come and change your heart. He must come and convict you of your sin of the sinful state of your nation and you being part of it, you being a contributor to the, to the nation's sins, my friend. God must come in and visit you and he must convict you of your sin. He must convert you, he must turn you because Jesus says, except you be converted and become as children, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of God. You must be converted. You must be turned out of your sinful nature. You must be turned out of your sinful practice. You must be turned into the kingdom of God. And only Jesus can do that for you. But that's what he came for, what he lived for, what he died for, that men and women might be converted to him, that they might be turned to the Son of God and be visited again with salvation. So as a nation, my friend, as a nation in its entirety, departed from God, forgotten God, apostatized from God, far from God, alienated, estranged from God as a result of the iniquities, the sin, I tell you, the lawlessness of our nation, God, is far away from us. Far, far from us. He's given us over to madness. He's given us over, I tell you, to strange delusions because we no longer, as a nation, love God's truth. But it's the truth that would make you free. It's the truth that would save you. It's the truth in Jesus Christ that would reconcile you to God, bring him back to you. So cry with the psalmist, return, return, O God of hosts, come and visit our nation again with your salvation to your son Jesus, whom you gave up to the death of the cross in order that sinners like us a nation like us, that we might be saved by the blood of the Lamb, that we might be saved by faith in Jesus, by believing and trusting in your Son, Jesus Christ. But then there's the personal guilt, my friends. We're all guilty before God, every single one of us, the Bible says. All who sin and come short of the glory of God. It's not just, it's not just the world. It's not just your own nation. It comes down to you personally. Every single one of us, my friend. It's a personal dealing with God. It has to get personal. You have to get convicted personally. You have to be shown your sin. You have to acknowledge your sin. You have to confess your sin. You have to repent of your sin. All your sin, my friends, all of it. And you must return to God, to your maker, but he must return to you. He must return to you, my friends. He's far away from you personally. He's gone from you. And my friends, he's of purer eyes than to behold evil. He won't even look upon you 
in your natural state and condition of apostasy, of departure from God. My friends, he's departed from you because you've departed from him. The Bible says the wrath of God is revealed from the heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold to suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And my dear friends, as long as you suppress the truth about your sin, about your state, about your condition and sin, your apostasy, your departure from God, as long as you suppress that truth, there's no hope of God returning. There's no hope of God visiting you with his salvation. There has to be an open, an open acknowledgement of your sin. There has to be transparency with God. If you say that you have no sin, you make God a liar. So you see, my friends, for God to return to you personally, for God to come and visit you with his salvation, for Jesus to come with healing in his wings, you, my friends, you, my friends, must come to a realization, an acknowledgement, a deep conviction of your sin. You must come to that place of crying out to me. Jesus, save me or I die. Save me or I perish. Return to me, Jesus. Return to me or I'm for hell. I'm for hell's damnation if you don't return to me. It's serious. It's urgent, my friends. Oh, I implore you, be reconciled to God, my friends, today. Call upon the name of the Lord. And who knows, who knows, but God may hear your cry. God, God may come. He may return to you. He may visit you with his salvation. He sent his son from heaven for that purpose and that reason. Is there not good hope there, my friends? Is there not light there? Is there not just a chink of light in the darkness of your sin, in the darkness of your apostasy? Is there not some light and some hope there? that God sent his son into the world, that God had his son crucified, dead and buried, and raised again from the dead in order that God's salvation might be yours, in order that God could return to you, in order that God could be reconciled to you. But oh, oh my friends, there has to be a Oh, there has to be conviction. There has to be truth. There has to be reality. There has to be, my friends, realism with you that you sin, that you've departed from God, that you've neglected, that you've rejected God, that you've turned your back upon Him, that you've forsaken Him, and because you've forsaken him, he's forsaken you. So here you are as a God-forsaken race. Here you are as a God-forsaken nation. And here you are as a God-forsaken person. Unless he returns to you. Unless he visits you with his salvation. Unless he comes to you in Christ, in Jesus. Because there's no other way. I am the way, says Jesus. There is salvation in none other name, the Bible says. Only through Christ, only through Jesus, who died and rose again from the dead, in order that God might be reconciled to you. Through his Son, Jesus Christ, and through that shed blood on the cross, that you might be washed and made clean, of all your defilement, and that you might be made fit for purpose, fit for life, fit for heaven, and fit for God. But God must return to you, my friend. 
And so I urge you, I implore you, that you be reconciled to God today, that you call upon his name, that you seek his face, that you call as the Sabbath does, O oh God, return, O oh God, we implore, we beseech you, come and visit us again with your salvation. Because I tell you, unless God does return, unless God does visit us again, there is no hope, my friends. More lawlessness, more immorality, more breakup of marriage, more destruction of life, more destruction of mind, more yeah, destruction of body, and then the destruction of eternal everlasting flames in the torments of hell. Unless God comes, returns, and visits us again, there is no hope. Because your only hope is in God through Jesus Christ. There is no other hope, my friends. That's why so many of you live in despair. That's why so many of you live in drunkenness. That's why so many of you are steeped in drugs. That's why so many of you turn to the wickedness, the immorality that abounds amongst you in despair, looking for some measure, tiny little bit of pleasure in the midst of your darkness and despair and hopelessness because you're a people without hope. Your only hope is in God returning to you. Your only hope is in God visiting you. Your only hope is in Jesus, the Son of God, sent into the world that do Him, that you might be reconciled to God and God reconciled to you. That He might look down, the psalmist says, Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Look down from heaven. He's far away. God is in heaven, and you are upon earth. There's a great distance between you. And that distance, my friends, cannot be shortened but by the gospel, but by Jesus Christ, sent into the world, made a made made of a woman made under the law in order my friends to accomplish in order to redeem sinners in order to redeem those under the condemnation of the law condemned my friends by those commandments of god every one of them pronounces condemnation upon you the death sentence the wages of sin, the transgression of the law, the want of conformity to God's law, condemned. And so there's a distance between you and God that's immeasurable. And I tell you, I tell you, my friends, it's a distance that cannot be shortened by you. You cannot do it, my friends. You cannot do it by your religiosity you can't do it you can't do it by your work you can't do it by your so-called good deed. there is no way my friend there is no way that you can shorten that distance between you and god he's in heaven and you're on earth how can you reach him how is he to be reached well some people in the ancient world they thought they could do it by building a tower, the Babylonian tower, and God smited that, God smote it, and scattered the people into all the different nations and languages. So that doesn't work. How can the distance between you and God, how can you reach God when he's in heaven and you're on earth? The answer's in God himself. He sent his son into the world. He came himself. 
God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God came himself in Jesus. He so loved the world. He so loved sinners departed from him. He so loved men and women lost in sin, forsaken. He sent his son Jesus. He came in Jesus, his son, made of a woman. And he lived that beautiful life and he died that death on the cross. He suffered his own wrath. He took his own curse upon himself in order that sinners might be brought back to God, in order that he might be able to return to them. By the cross, my friends, by his son, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. That's the only way you can reach God in heaven. That's the only way you can be reconciled to God in heaven. That's the only way you can, that God can return to you and visit you with his salvation. God has bridged the gap between heaven and earth, sent his son Jesus to die on the cross, and that's the bridge between earth and heaven. And if you will but look to the cross, if you would but look to the crucified one, if you would but look to Jesus, oh, you could be reconciled this very day. If you would turn, if you would return to God, if you would re repent of your sin, if you would be converted, you must be, except you be converted, you shall not enter the kingdom of God, says Jesus. So my friends, today, today if you would reach God in heaven, if you would be reconciled, if you would be right with God in heaven, though there is a distance between you, oh, God himself has made a way, God himself, has made a way by which a man, a woman, can reach him in heaven. There's a bridge, my friends. There's a ladder up to heaven. And it's in the shape, it's in the form of a cross. And the one crucified on that cross, Jesus, he's the ladder up to heaven. He's the way that you reach God in heaven. But he's the only way. There is no other way. There is no other ladder. There is no other bridge. There is no other way back to God. No other way that you ever can attain heaven. No other way. Only Jesus, only Jesus, who loved sinners and gave himself for them. Any hope? Any hope of God's returning to us? Any hope of God coming down and visiting us with his salvation? And visiting you with his salvation? Yes! Yes, I say! As long, as long, I tell you, as you've got breath in your body, once that's gone, it's too late. Once you breathed your last and got out of this world, the proverb says, where the tree falls, there it lies. No shifting it afterwards. You fall out of this world in your sin. That's how you remain for all eternity. Too late then. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now there is hope while you've got breath in your body. God would return to you. God would be reconciled to you. God has made a way. God has sent his only son. God sent his son to die that death of the cross and rise again from the dead. And God even this day has presented you with a living Savior, an ever-living Savior, 
who is able to save to the uttermost all those who come to God by him. If you would come by Jesus, if you would come by the Son of God, if you would come to Jesus, he bids you to come unto me, he says. You could be saved, you could be reconciled. God could return to you this very day. Though he be in heaven and though you be on earth, there is hope, my friend. And we bring the best hope to you. Monday by Monday we come to you and we preach the gospel to you. We preach Jesus and him crucified to you because that's the only hope of the world. That's the only hope of your nation. That's the only hope of yourself personally. There is no other hope, my friend, to be without God and without the knowledge of God. To be, not to be reconciled to God, my friends, is to be hopeless. And to die that way, hopeless, my friend, that's the ultimate, I tell you, in despair. Be not despairing. We bring hope to you today. We bring the message of hope to you today. You can be justified. You can be made right with God by the blood of the cross. You can be saved. You can be born again. You can be reconciled. God can return to you. He's in heaven. You're on earth, but he'll come to you. He'll visit you with his salvation. But you must repent of your sin. You must turn from it. And you must believe. You must believe unto hope. There's no hope without faith, my friend. No hope without faith. And the faith must be in Jesus. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. A sheer impossibility. No faith, no pleasure of God. You must believe. You must repent. You must believe in order for God, whom you have forsaken, and he forsaken you, in order that he might return to you. He's the God of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts. He's the God who has an army at his disposal. He's a God, my friends, who brings judgments upon the world, who brings judgments upon your nation, who brings judgments upon you. For some of you, well, for some of you, hopefully, there'll be wake-up calls. Oh, there are many ways, many ways by which God can move and bring judgments upon the human race, mankind. He comes, I tell you, he comes in the storm. He comes in the earthquake, the tsunami. He comes in the pestilence. He comes in the COVID-19. He comes in the car accident. He comes in all kinds of ways, bringing judgments, temporal judgments upon men and women. But that they might take heed, that they may think on eternal matters, that they might consider that one day they're going to stand before the judge of all the earth and they're going to be judged fully and finally. We must all appear before the judgment throne of God. What then? Too late to be reconciled to God then. Return, return, O oh God of hosts as David and visit us with your salvation that we might be saved from that dreadful judgment that dreadful day when you'll stand before your maker before God Almighty and he will judge you with a terrible judgment and you will perish in eternal flames in the fires of hell Unless in this life God 
has returned to you and visited you with his salvation. But hope, oh hope, my friend, don't let it disappear from you. Don't let it go, my friends. Hope, there's hope, I tell you. In the darkest, in the darkest night, my friends, there's a light that shines from yon cross where the Son of God bled and died. There's a light shines down upon the world from that cross even yet. That's where your hope lies. That's the one in whom your hope lies. He's the one who can bring God back to you. He's the one who died to bring you back to God. He's the reconciler. He's the mediator. He's the one by which, my friend, the hope of the gospel can be realized, become a reality in your heart and life. And you come to the experience of knowing God, knowing his forgiveness, knowing his pardon, knowing eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. But hope is only to be found in that cross and in the one who died on that cross. Faith, my friend, faith is what is required of you. Faith in the mercy of God. God is a merciful God. That's an attribute of God. Even if he saved nobody, he would still be merciful. He's a God of mercy. That's why we have hope. That's why we have the gospel. Because God is merciful. It's the very heart of the gospel, my friends, that there is forgiveness with God because of his mercy. His mercy, I tell you, towards those who have forsaken him, departed from him, apostatized from him. There's mercy, great mercy, I tell you, in the heart of God. But you have to believe in the mercy of God. You have to trust in the mercy of God by trusting in Jesus because he's the one who came and died on that cross to reveal the mercy of God. The mercy of God towards ruined sinners, apostates, those who have forsaken him, departed from him. He would be reconciled to them. And the cross is the proof, my friends, the cross is the proof that God would be reconciled to you today. His sending his son into the world to die that awful death in order that you might trust in his mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. And the distance between heaven and earth closed. The distance between heaven and earth, my friends, the two brought together. The two brought together. God returning to you. God coming down to you in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And being reconciled to you. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's the glad tidings. There's hope in the mercy of God. Should you but believe Trust in the mercy of God through his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, seek God. Seek his favor today. Seek his mercy today. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon the name while he is near. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the rest shall be added unto you. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. 
Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. What hinders you? What keeps you? Nothing but your unbelief. Nothing but your sin-darkened hearts and minds. There's a way. God would have you to seek Him. But my friends, He would have you to seek Him the right way. Not by your good deeds. Not by your religiosity. Not by anything in you. Not by anything that you do, can do, or would do. No. No, my friends, you must seek Him the right way. Not according to the law. The law is just given an order to educate you as to what kind of a sinner you are. The law can't save you. You must seek God in the right way. You must seek Him by faith. Faith in the Son of God, in the crucified Redeemer, in Jesus Christ who died on the cross. That's how you must seek Him. You must seek Him in the pages of the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. These are they that testify of me, says Jesus. And that you think you have eternal life. Oh, Jesus. Seek Him, my friend. Seek Him in the pages of God's Word. Seek Him. See His loveliness. See his merciful kindness. See the hope that he brings. See the life that he's able to give. See the love that he dispenses. See the liberty that he's able to bring to you. See the light that he's able oh, to shine into your hearts and minds and reveal to you the knowledge, the experience of the knowledge of God in Jesus Christ, His Son. Only through Him. Only when you embrace Jesus. Only when you trust in Jesus. Only when you lean upon Jesus. He and Him crucified will God return to you. Will God come to you, visit you with His salvation. But Jesus assures us that he will not cast out one sinner who comes to him sincerely repenting, sincerely believing. He will not cast out any sinner. No sinner in hell has ever or ever will say that they came to Jesus and got rejected. God would return to you, visit you with his salvation. But Jesus is the way, and there is no other, not other name, I tell you. Not Mohammed's, not the Pope's, not the Watchtower Society, not Buddha, not Confucius. One name under heaven. The whole canopy of heaven, whereby we must be saved. Jesus, the mighty Son of God, the mighty reconciler, the one, my friends, who can return God to you today and visit you with his salvation, that your apostasy, that your departure from God, that your God-forsakenness might be healed and that you might be made whole in Jesus. My friends, hear the admonition of the Son of God to you today. Once again, he said, Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, repent ye, woe soul. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You would like to have a copy of God's word. John's gospel, an extract from the Bible. 
offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. Read about Jesus. Read about the one who came to reconcile man to God, who paid the price for sin, who died and rose again from the dead, a living Savior. Read the living Word of God. Believe in the Son of God, that He is the Son of God, that you might have life in His name. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. Like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you also. May God bless you, I say, and of mercy, mercy upon your precious, never dying soul.